Well, good morning everyone and welcome to my garden. Today I'm going to be filming the June garden tour for you. It is June 29th as we speak. It seems for some reason I always wait until the very last minute to film these tours, but we could take a look around and see what's changed over the past month. So all the smooth hydrangeas are in bloom right now. In the corner there we have a limetta hydrangea. Then we have this inkberry holly. I'm trying to add in a lot more inkberry hollies into the property. We do have some issues in Pennsylvania with boxwood blight. So the inkberry holly is a nice alternative and you can shape it just like you would a boxwood. And I'm also trying to work a lot on just adding in some hardscaping here and there. So later on this week, hopefully Friday, I'm going to take us to Chanticleer Gardens. That is my favorite public garden that I think I've ever been to. Um, they just have the most kind of artistic touches there and they just use elements of nature in these interesting and creative ways. So I'm hoping to get some ideas for my garden on our visit there. But this is another limetta hydrangea that I just put in a pot for now and just sunk some stones into the ground that I already had. This hydrangea is the mini Mavet hydrangea. A lot of people ask what this is. This is Haas Halo. And I can remember when I purchased this Haas Halo as a little twig for I think $12 from Ken's Gardens. And now it's probably four or five years old absolutely gorgeous. I probably should have planted it a little bit further away from our garage. I have the Ringo Rose here. I have a Grace and she's the best flower in the garden of course. Panicle Hydrangea is just starting to bud up now in Pennsylvania. This Hydrangea I showed you recently in a video. This is the Invincible Spirit 2 Hydrangea. And I think by just seeing it in this beautiful evening light, you can hopefully understand why I just think this is the most glorious smooth hydrangea that I have ever seen. And so I underplanted the Invincible Spirit to here with some hookahs. And I can't recall the name of this hookah, but I do have the tag, so I will go ahead and put it on the screen. Now you can see this hydrangea is in distress right now because of the heat of the day, but don't worry about it. It will be absolutely fine by tomorrow morning. I'm doing some birthday flowers tomorrow morning or else I would have filmed this tour tomorrow morning, but hopefully we'll be okay here filming in the evening. So here on this side of the border, I have some beautiful ladies mantle. I think my mom purchased these for me because I had had some over by the Invincible Spirit too and I just kind of lost them the one year. We've got a beautiful big hosta in bloom and my all time favorite hydrangea. Oh wait, I already said what my favorite was. Okay, second favorite smooth hydrangea has to be the Annabelle hydrangea. I mean, you just can't beat that, right? <laughs> now what I have going on here is a hedge of catmint that I just took divisions of other catmint on the property and moved them over here. I have a whole bunch of gladiolas that are starting to bud up here, so it won't be too much longer now. And then I planted yarrow very early in the season as a cool flower. This is the Colorado Mix Yarrow. And I planted this here to hopefully attract some hoverflies and some other good bugs to this area to help me if the thrips do come in later in the season. So as we just travel down the border, so you've just got a mix of perennials and flowers for cutting. So we have some Coreopsis over here. We have some lamb's ear from my grandma's garden over here that I've kind of interplanted with our native Rubecchia. I have, guess what? You won't even believe this. Do you guys know the flower Rose Campion? This is direct from my grandma's garden. I planted it probably right when we moved six years ago. It was here that year and I haven't seen it since this year. And you can see how close it is now to my peony so I think maybe I'll try to gather the seeds from it 
Um, can you guys let me know if you have rose campion, does it come back, you know, from the rootstock or do you feel like it self seeds itself? I'd love some help with that because certainly I want to keep my grandma's rose campion going. Back there starting to go out is some yellow loose strife. And you can see kind of my drift of milkweed there for the monarchs. And then we have some lime lights and the Winecraft Gold Smoke Bush, which is my new favorite chartreuse foliage shrub. The Lemony Lace Elderberry over here is still looking pretty good. I do get concerned about it burning out as the season goes on and we get closer to August, but so far I'm really not seeing too much burn on it. Down here, I have some Cosmos. I think these are double click cranberry I'm growing this year. Um, they're not even budded up yet. We have the Sarinth Major, which I've been really loving this year. A little bit of Blue Boy Bachelor's Buttons left over, but pretty much done now. So over here in this area, I have my Black Knight Scabiosa. And my mom was mentioning how much she enjoyed having this in a bouquet I made for her. And I did plant quite a big drift here and I've been cutting on it pretty heavily. So what you're really seeing is it just butted up. Oops, touched a little bee there. And then that's what it looks like in bloom. And I have more in the raised bed in different colors I can show you. Over here, we have some Fever Few. I cut on the Fever Few really hard this year, but there's still some left over to enjoy in the garden. And we have some lavender here. This is actually lavender from my work garden. And then here we have Prairie Sun Rebecca with a beautiful green center. Down here, I have some more Coreopsis. And then I also have my Mexican Bush Sage in here, which is a beautiful purple bloom in the fall and absolutely wonderful for drying. If you're wondering how to get more Mexican Bush Sage plants, literally just pinch a branch off and stick it in the ground and it will root. See this right here? That's what I did with that one. This piece here is just me pinching the top and pushing it into the ground. I don't think I've ever seen any plant root as vigorously and easily as the Mexican bush sage. So coming on from that Mexican bush sage, we have the hedge of catmint. We have some dahlias that I'm growing from seed. Mainly I'm getting pinks and yellows and mainly shorter varieties so far. Here I have some red spike amaranth, which I need to get to harvesting this. Maybe I'll put this in the birthday bouquets that I'm doing tomorrow. And then back here we have some annual phlox and some pink bachelor's buttons. And of course that hedge of burgart and sage. So that's pretty much it for the main flower walk and the hydrangea garden. Why don't we go see the driveway garden? So here we are at the driveway garden. This garden has seen a lot of changes since we first moved here. If you've been following me for a while, you might recall that this area was all diseased plum trees when we first moved in, just a jungle of trees. We quickly removed all those and I was doing row cropping here in the driveway. I probably even have a picture of when I had pro cuts growing in rows here. So that's how I did things for a while, but I've been trying to transition the entire property back to a garden that functions as a cutting garden. So I've been trying to kind of add a little bit more of a landscape flair over here. So this part was probably developed when you saw it last year. So why don't we start on this area, which is entirely new. Everything here has only been here for about three months. So of course I like to use what I have. So I put in a hedge of catmint 
and something I've really been enjoying this year, which I will stock up on bulb wise, is these Schubertii alliums. Look how absolutely phenomenal these are. Like literal fireworks in the garden. I have been told that they hold like this all season. I just think I've never seen anything like this before. Have you ever seen an allium like this? I believe Christophii looks similar to this. So Christophii and Schubertii will do this in the garden. But you know, I have Sensation, Purple Sensation. I have the white one, Globe Master. Some of those other taller purples, they certainly don't hold like these guys. And it's fun that they're short too, isn't it? I really like that. So we can just travel down this pathway. This swing was given to us by our old neighbor. His wife sadly just passed on and I remember sometimes they would sit out in the backyard on this swing. So it's a little bit uh, distressed right now. It's being held together with some, uh, what is it called, gorilla tape, but you can still sit in it. So it's a-okay. So here we have some hot pink dianthus, which is totally done now. I'll, I'll overlay a picture of that if I can. And we did have a lot of foxy foxglove here. It's either been cut or I'm just letting it go to seed. But over here, it's really all about the lilies, the snapdragons, and another wave of pro-cut sunflowers. Oh, and the sweet peas. So here we have the pro-cut plum, looking beautiful. And this succession is just starting over here. And I can smell the sweet peas. The wind is blowing in my direction. What a wonderful smell it is. So we have the blue Celeste. Oh my goodness, it smells amazing. <laughs> I wish you guys could smell this. Um, but we have the blue Celeste sweet pea, more of a light purple in my opinion. And the Zinfandel is that dark purple. Now this area here that kind of looks like nothing is where I have all my blue delphiniums. I'll try to overlay some pictures of things I've sold with the blue delphiniums and I probably have some pictures of them in the garden too before I cut them. So you can travel back around here. I have queen lime with blush zinnia here. It's only given me a few stems so far. That's all right. We're on track. But it's really all about these Madame Butterfly Bronze with White Snapdragons. I started these back in February. I planted them out six weeks before our last frost. And they can take the cold. And this year I am going to try a fall planting. I've been told by a friend here on YouTube that hers wintered over beautifully. Thank, thank you so much for that information. And I'm going to go ahead and give that a try as well. And now we can see the apple blossom snaps too. I've cut most of the apple blossom at this point. And we can also see a nice annual foliage that kind of has the look of euphorbia, but without the toxic sap. Uh, this is Bupleurum. This is really easy to grow from seed. I would just direct seed Bupleurum, just kind of scatter it. And I thought it would be nice to have the Bupleurum growing in between these Madame Butterflies, just to have that nice chartreuse with the beautiful peach. And I'm really happy with how it looks. So we need to start cutting all of this now. And here's some Bupleurum you can see. It does get quite tall, really beautiful. I do have some more dahlias that I've grown from seed. Look, I didn't even notice this until right now. We have one butted up. Let's see what color it is. Looks orange. Well, that'll be fun to see. And then we have the rest of the succession of pro cuts. So let's flip over to the other side and look at the lilies and the poppies. So we have the Asiatic lilies blooming now. This is the summer wine mix from Longfield. There is a part of me that thinks I should have put the Asiatics more at the front. I planted in the front the new Oriental Rose Lilies, which are the double Orientals, and I was just so excited about them. I wanted them to have the spotlight at the front, but I'm not sure. I might have to flip-flop these bulbs 
you know, next year. We'll think about that. I think we have to let the rose lilies bloom and then make a decision. But let's take a look at the poppies that are just starting to bloom now. It's been kind of an interesting day because the poppies have started to bloom, but then all of a sudden it's 95 degrees with 85% humidity and they've decided to go to seed right away. <laughs> so this is the black swan poppy, really beautiful. And they're just kind of scattered throughout the garden back here. Lots of foxgloves back here. So these will probably all bloom. I bet these will bloom tomorrow, judging from the look of them. So we'll see what happens with those. I'm not really sure. Um, I've never seen them go to seed this quickly. That was a little bit shocking. I mean, look at even this one. This opened today. I think it opened about 1030. I was out here checking on things and not only did it go to seed already, but you know, it started to shatter already. Um, very interesting, you know? new things to learn every year all the time every day learning right so let me show you a flower i'm really excited about i hope you might consider growing it super easy to grow from seed this is star flower this is scabiosa either stellata or stellata not sure on how to pronounce that latin but this is grown mainly for the seed pods and i think this is going to look phenomenal on the dry flower christmas tree this year and I'm gonna use these as Christmas balls. I mean, this is so exciting. Does this get anybody else really excited? I think this might be my favorite thing I've grown this year, just because it's so different and fun and unusual. Also, I was not expecting the foliage to be so awesome. This is really a light silvery green foliage. You can see the contrast there. See kind of just that normal green of the liriope. And then the contrast to this nice silvery light green. So I think there's a lot to love about this plant. And of course, first it gets these white blooms very quickly. It moves to the seed pod. Really awesome. Super easy to grow. That is a cool flower. That's not in cool flowers, but it's a cool flower. Okay, here we have, oh, this is so fun. These drumstick alliums. Now these are just good fun. I really feel like these belong in a Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> they look almost edible, don't they? <laughs> so we have some more Colorado yarrow. I'm seeing really that the Colorado yarrow mix um, is mainly for me pinks and whites. I'm not getting a lot of peaches. So that'll be interesting to see if it kind of keeps pumping out pink. Not all of them are bloomed yet. And then we have a microphylla hydrangea, some hookahs, and now we are under our Cortland and Pink Lady apple tree. So this is really the entrance here. And I believe my friends, that is basically what is blooming in the driveway garden now. Uh, by next month, we'll be able to take a closer look at the figs. We'll have all of the Casablanca and Stargazer lilies to look at. But for me, I'm just really excited about this garden. And I really hope that this garden in particular is encouraging. Because like I said, let me back up a bit. From here, all the way to the Nellie Stevens Holly is brand new. So, do we have super tall shrubs and trees over here yet? No. Does everything make sense as far as height goes in terms of how it's going to look and how I plan for it to look? You know, no. But I don't think it matters. There's still so many beautiful things to look at. And also, this garden was well, not expensive to create at all. You know, lily bulbs are not expensive. Seeds are not expensive. Gladiola is very inexpensive. So I just hope it's encouraging to see. The, oh, and the catmint completely free from the property already. Just divisions. So, oh, okay, one more thing. <laughs> Sorry. But even these astilbe over here, you know, these are bare root astilbe. So please don't ever feel like money is an issue when it comes to gardening. You know, I could have just pulled up all this land, right? And say I had $20, I could just do 
Cosmos, Zinnias, Agaratum, Procuts, Buplurum for 20 bucks. And I have a full on bouquet that's gonna produce loads of blooms. So I just don't want anybody to ever feel like when it comes to gardening, that money is an issue. Just work with whatever you have. You have $1, that's a bag of sunflower seeds. Okay, let's head back to the raised beds. So it looks like Grace didn't clean up her toys. <laughs> it's getting pretty late now. I can feel the mosquitoes coming for me. We'll walk here under this Macintosh apple tree. And I'll show you this quickly. And then I do need to get to harvesting before the sun goes down. We do have some Mapira lilies, which is also Asiatic, just starting to bloom. Really beautiful. As I'm looking at the lily in real life and viewing it on the camera, I think it's much darker in real life than it's appearing. And here we have my grandma's garden. And I was able to find her a shoe. So I was very, very happy about that. But this is just a very peaceful foliage garden. Uh, Martha's garden over here. So guys, hopefully it's not getting too dark. But in the front here, I have my two beds of dahlias. These are ones that I did start inside. These are ones where I just put the tubers in the ground. I'm also doing a bit of experimenting here. Here I seeded alyssum all around this bed. I didn't do it with that bed. Oh, and I'm also going to experiment with not pinching some of these. So just will be able to watch some differences. I have some successions going here. I have some Bernary Giant Coral Zinnias here to replace the Pro Cuts I'm going to be harvesting tonight. And then I have Pro Cut Gold Light here to go in after the Bells of Ireland. So you might remember that this bed, probably the last time you saw it, was full of ranunculus. Now it has a wave of Pro Cut Gold Lights. We have some gladiolas here, all different colors of red, some bright red, some deep red, and they're starting to butt up as well. You can see only a few pro cuts left, and I specifically let these bloom out because the party is tomorrow morning. And since it's for a party, I want them to look awesome right for that event. Those are really event picking that I'm doing tonight. Here we have the Bells of Ireland really really happy with the bells of ireland this year if you've struggled with bells of ireland germination disease issue i am right there with you i have got a lot of diseases on my bells of ireland through the years this year you know the bells of ireland gods were just in my favor things worked out so here we have grandma's pin cushion flower all different colors i'm seeing here some very, very beautiful, dark, deep, almost black color. Also some white, a really nice mix of colors so far. So I'll see, actually do see a couple thrips on this one. So here they come. Here the carnations are just starting. I guess that's all we have of the carnation so far. And then this is my Orlea that I'm going to be collecting seed from. Here we have our Dara. And you really want to wait to pick the Dara. I've seen a lot of posts in groups when people are picking Dara when it's shaped like this. You want to pick it when it's shaped like that. Oh, borderline plant bug. Look at that. Do you see that? There he goes. Um, that's a bad bug right there but anyway don't pick it like this it'll probably wilt and you'll need to use some kind of quick hydration product instead pick it like this see how it kind of goes down you know like when an umbrella is opened it goes down this one is still facing up so i need to show you something new that i put in back here 
This is kind of just where we have the black raspberries and I have tomatoes and peppers and stuff back here. But I put in a limelight prime hydrangea hedge over here. It doesn't look like much now, but in three years time, it'll be a beautiful five foot hedge of the limelight prime hydrangea. And I think it'll just be something so beautiful here and also something that I can build upon and make this area a little more formal. Because up until this year, we just had a wood pile here and I would really like to start to develop this as a nice garden because we have some beautiful things here. We have lilacs, we have some beautiful evergreens and I would just like to make it a little bit nicer back here. Why not? And there we have the pear tree in the distance. I'll have to get some really good pear recipes. Mmm, it's gonna be delicious. Well guys, I wanna thank you so much for hanging out with me and taking a look around my gardens this evening. I think it's about that time when I need to get the snips out and get to snipping and conditioning some flowers for tomorrow. So I wanna wish you a great day and I hope to see you back here in my garden sometime soon. Happy gardening, bye.